actually a lot. I'm going to pan around, and you're going to see a slot between the concrete bulkhead and the Perez site uh, that's all indented with riprap in it. And that's going to be a natural edge with granite stepping down to the water, back over that way. Between the bulkhead here you see on the left and the Perez site. That will be a natural, we're actually working on it right now, creating the structure and the bulkheading. So we can actually stage granite going up the shoreline, respecting that the shoreline has been broken down and is almost becoming a new natural edge. And it'll actually be like a natural shoreline. It won't be bulkheading going vertically down into the water. It will slope up with granite slabs. The tide will actually enter that inlet. It will wash. People will be able to sit on the granite slabs with their feet in the water or a foot away from the water. And um, if that can happen, that's really the beginning for me of respecting the water and, um, and not just creating these vertical walls with, with railings above it, as we see in Battery Park City and, uh, and even some of the renderings in the 179A uh, brochure publication. Um, this, this, uh, this thing that water is dangerous and we can't get close to it, to me, is, is a disease of the fear of, of water and uh, basically something that we were actually we actually come from. But this, what you see here, what we're coming into seeing here, this whole, that, that bulk heading there, that wood, that timber, we're going to stage up that bank. Stage up the bank. So this whole 120 foot plus slot in here is going to get formed into a, into a, a kind of staging. And it's going to be granite slabs with boulders and aquatic plants. So it's not just going to be this big, con you know, big granite uh, staircase. It's actually going to be something that's going to be organic and people, it'll be an adventure to step down to it. Uh, the tide won't come in at, to this extent back there because it'll actually be staged, but it will come in at least eight feet. Uh, so when you come down the walkway, there's going to be a balcony over there with an arc on it and so, and there'll be a ship railing on it, so handicapped or, or kids or older people want to come and just sit and look and lean on the edge and look down, but what they will be looking at at that curved balcony is down onto this stage thing, and I think you're going to have all kinds of people of all ages just wanting to come down and sit on the, on the edge of those granite slabs. But again, it will be horizontal, it will be staged with certain areas with larger kind of pieces coming out uh, with uh, native aquatic plants. And it's the beginning of the creation of a shoreline that has more of a natural feel to it rather than just having cast iron 19th century park benches. Uh, four feet away from a uh, balustrade uh, with a vertical wall going down 11 feet uh, into the water. In this building, for me, in the site, I've heard all kinds of things that they're going to take the building down and make a parking lot. My feeling is parking lot, whatever. I mean, they're holding on to it as an investment. My feeling is, is that how can we get a certain amount of incentive? My feeling is just with the DOS incinerator plant. These are indigenous vernacular pieces of architecture that once they're taken down are lost forever. The structure of that building is beautiful. It, you know, it has a factory kind of feel to it from the 18th and 19th century. And uh, it could be made into this magnificent boathouse, sail loft, shipbuilding, as well as restaurant uh, with parking. And it could become a, a public site. Uh, and I think it could be retrofit to do that. I mean, the tipple, that conveyor up there uh, with the motor, etc. I mean, I'm looking at some of the concrete, which seems to be some of those walls definitely will need to be taken down and reshaped. But that wall right there, we probably want to take down because it really cuts into the view. Here I am kind of working. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of what I've been asked to do. We're going to clean this up before the contractor comes in, at least I hope to. Uh, because I am working closely with trying to make the engineers understand that uh, there's an existing situation that the design is, that's being done uh, to bulkhead this line in Chicago and in Philadelphia. Uh, and keep plugging them and giving them photographs of the site saying we must respect what's here. The whole reason for me conceiving of this step up, step down shoreline has a lot to do with the existing condition. Uh, the design I made in the model I showed at the Newtown Creek Monitoring Co Committee uh, meeting at the Freeman Street building. That edge, then, that small model, related to what's on Newtown Creek. Because there is a bulkhead there. There's a concrete bulkhead that seems to be in perfectly good shape. But this here, I said, this looks like a perfect opportunity 
uh, because it's a shoreline that has been unused, that has been slowly breaking down and becoming more of the natural edge it used to be, which is a sloped edge coming down to the water. Actually, at low tide, there's a little beach right here in the middle. There's actually sand and a few rocks. Let's go in Whale Creek here. And this whole vertical wall here becomes sheet piled and then it becomes organically kind of worked with, with both 12 by 12 timbers, louvers between the sheet pile. So it's not just this flat wall, it's actually, it's a staged wall uh, uh, that becomes both accessible to small boats we would be able to just come up right alongside this wall with the sheet piling because there are elements on it, both timbers and uh, louvers between the, the recessed coffer of the pile that one could hold on to, tie up a boat, and just step up onto the park. Uh, and I think that's a really important uh, element of the design of, uh, of this whole creek is that, that this edge on the, on the water treatment plant side becomes an edge that small boats can access and, uh, and come into, into shelter. Unique. I mean, the Hudson River doesn't have anything like that. The East River could never have because of the tides. But Newtown Creek is this wonderful creek. I mean, look at the water. I mean, it's totally fine. It's not what it was like 30 years ago. All of this stuff here held timber, which you see down here. The reason why this is all dropped off, when they destroyed the buildings up here, they had huge barges against here, and they just crushed the timber off and then bent all these things. Down here, it's better. My idea was to, was to just basically work this concrete well. It seems to be in good shape. DEP and the engineers say, forget it. That doesn't exist. <laughs> it exists, and unless you respect it, you can't take it out. You take it out, you're going to have earth falling into the creek. You can't do that. And uh, so you're going to leave it. My suggestion was that they sheet pile right directly in front of it, use it as a jig, and then uh, connect to it. Uh, and then secure it back to a retaining wall that's actually going to be uh, about 8 to 10 feet high that's going to frame all the way around the site the pad and elevation for the support building, which needs to have at least an elevation of plus 13 above mean high water. When I was brought on, I was told to work with fencing, lighting, and landscaping on Greenpoint Avenue and Provost. Basically, I wasn't interested in that. And so I took the risk in the presentation to say, um, that my main interest is to work with the resource of um, the edge of the property on this around the support building of Newtown Creek and Whale Creek and to create a ex publicly accessible shoreline that's also accessible to the plant workers, uh, respecting what exists, working with it, and then staging, working back to a wall that will hold the support building, but essentially leave things as they are, respect what's there, work with it, secure it, and make it publicly accessible. We have to access at the end of page and are these contact tanks in this emergency spillway that I have to move over. There will be views of contact tanks which are bubbling with uh, processed water that have the smell of ammonium hydroxide. To me, it's like bringing people through hell, finally, to paradise. And the architects have kind of bought in. Here we have a little transition, which I love just to cut this up. And we're getting deeper into the creek. But anyway, right now we're working on that public access from Page to the corner and then north to Newtown Creek. But particularly from Page uh, to the corner is a, is a tough transition. And so rather than just make a concrete walk, I'm actually forming three different types of, of, uh, of structures of experiences. One is a ramp uh, that's made out of steel that as you walk on it has a sound. And as you rise up this ramp, you begin to look into the inferno. You know, not really the inferno, but but it's kind of the plant, the thing that New, New Point has had to live with for all these years. A little patch of with that uh, tree of heaven right there. That's the end of Freeman Avenue on Whale Creek. That pretty much disappears because there's a huge building going on, you know, right across Freeman toward Page uh, North. So this right here will be part of the public access, but there will be a, a wall. Um, and so the idea is that we're coming down Well Creek, we're going to access along here. Right here where we are, the boat is actually going to be part of the shoreline because they have to cut in here and, uh, and go toward that corner over there. And that's Humboldt Avenue. Whale Creek went all the way down originally. 
you know, went on three times the length of what it is now. Here we are here, this is what I'm talking about. Here's the creek here. We're right here, but the creek went all the way down to Misrol, uh, Mis past Greenpoint, past uh, Callier. And uh, here you see all the tributaries of Whale Creek going all the way toward Provost and past it originally. But this is Green Street. So this whole area that we're in was originally swamp. And all these inlets in here are probably all kinds of clams and oysters and sea heather and all kinds of stuff that uh, originally natives probably uh, harvested and survived them. I originally took slides from the top of that digester up there. Then. And this shoreline is, is magnificent. I mean, look at all this natural stuff. No, it's not going gonna, gonna to be there. This is going to be a major thoroughfare for semi-trucks and for piping, for utility stuff. It's going to go over there. That's the most important sensitive part of the thing is that we create something. And this is why they bit. As I said, no, no. We're going to create a linear park around Newtown Creek coming down into Whale Creek using the existing bulkhead, leaving the existing uh, elevation, which is plus four, four feet above high water, and, uh, and then build a wall, build a retaining wall. And they saw it as a kind of environmentally, I mean, if you don't work the shoreline, you work 20 feet inside it, the environmental impact study is going to have a lot better chance of clearing than if you go right to the edge and have to start creating this huge bulkheading to hold up, you know, 11 feet of earth pressing against it. So I think they kind of said, gee, this, this will work out, you know, leave the edge the way it is, have the artist work with us to, to create a, uh, to leave it at that elevation. When I first saw the site and I saw this crimp in the wall here, this little kind of jog in the wall, I just saw it as a perfect, I mean, just leave it, and we just keep working with it. You have to sheet pile, sheet pile in front of it, put fenders on it, possibly even have a floating situation here, to create a kind of indentation for uh, water taxis uh, and for larger vessels that come in to drop off either visitors of the plant, people fly into, into LaGuardia Airport. Uh, it's already been a thing. There's a taxi, a water taxi there waiting for them. They get on the ta other taxi. They leave uh, um, LaGuardia Airport go down through the Hellgate, come down the East River, and come to Newtown Creek without having to take buses, limousines, subways, go to Manhattan, come back this way, and it could be a beautiful uh, uh, area. I mean, you know. Roughly, uh, uh, this area here, uh, to those trees, is roughly 20 feet. Again, from there, there's going to be a wall. The wall is about as high as what you see those containers there. I mean, that's a little higher than what they're going to be. But that wall will be faced with granite, and there will be plantings in between. And uh, again, it's not this big. The line is more like uh, 10 feet on the inside or 5 feet on the inside of those trees you see over there. Uh, and uh, so the public will be able to come right down to this point, past it, down into here, and ultimately uh, there will be a transition from, from the actual width of the park and it will get a little narrower. People will be able to walk down toward Humboldt or that edge of the plant, take a turn east, and rise up onto Green Avenue, or at least that right-of-way that now the DLS uses for parking. But the whole thing of creating a loop, actually a walkway, that people can either park there and come in that way and come to the park this way and go to Newtown Creek and exit toward Page, or vice versa, to walk from the community, take a bike, roller blades, skateboards, whatever, and, uh, and come into the park on Page. You want to walk up? Let's walk up to the People will realize that, you know, to not come People, I think most people are going to be up at the end on Newtown Creek because that's where it's really beautiful. And, uh, but the advantage of being able to actually come down here for plant workers to come down here or for boaters to come down here, uh, to me, is a major, a major resource uh, that we're working with. And uh, it seems to be workable. This is, as I said, a massive bulkhead. The ground you're standing on has been well settled. And this is what I'm trying to impress the engineers with smell this. I mean, we should leave these here and tell people when they come into the plant, they come into the park, if it smells, just crush these things and put them to your nose. Because this is very aromatic. I mean, it's a tremendous smell that. And the other element is to create, you know, again, plantings that are very aromatic. I mean, I spoke of that back in, the, in December. Um, and it's something that I do on other projects. I mean, there are plants that you can have flowering being aromatic in April as things come out. May, 
June, even at two week intervals, you can have trees, plants, shrubs that are constantly flowering and smelling. Diverse smells, not all this sweet stuff. The wall is, is 22 feet back and roughly is 10 feet high here. But as you start getting toward the end, it goes down to being eight feet because that's where the support building parking lot is. And the, what we're trying to do is create a dip down so that toward the end, you have the trees in the parking lot. You no longer have the support building. What you're really looking at here is not so much the wall that separates you know, this park from, from plus 13, which is the, the roadway that goes to the parking lot and actually truck bays that, uh, on the east side of the support building. But uh, you'll be looking at the building. I mean, the support building's right there. The other thing, create an edge that's not a fence. You know, create an edge that people can actually sit down at the edge of the water and have ladders. In the model that I showed, I had uh, 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 light preservers. So if somebody does fall in, you know, the ladders and stuff, you just throw it in. And the water's clean enough that people do not disintegrate when they hit the water. In the 60s, when I used to go in, then it was definitely serious. But now, it's very clean. To tell you the truth, it's much more exciting working on that one. And I think we'll meet much more diverse and have a wonderful entry. Because the entry will be on Newtown Creek, going right toward Dutch Kill. There's a nice expanse of water. And uh, it won't be coming to the middle of the site as we would have here. And then basically that end would have been a total dead end. This way we're going right to the Crooks, right to Newtown Creek, right to a really beautiful stretch of the, of the waterway and the shoreline. And then coming along that whole natural granite stepped area and the point. To me, that's the, that, to me, those become really the park. The most exciting part of the park is going to be up at that end on Newtown Creek and the corner. Coming down here is accessible, and it'll be a public edge, and boats can come down here, and you might have, you know, kayakers, who knows what. Uh, people at the other end uh, have also asked for these kind of in, uh, recessed circles in the park where they could all sit around and talk. And uh, so there'll be one here, and there'll be one at the end. We should, we should walk up there. Again, as I'm standing here, I'm looking at the water. I'm also looking at the DOS bulk heading. During the week, you will see you will see the trucks going up the ramp, etc. No problem. You'll still be in a park that's yours. You'll still be able to access the water and sit here with your picnic or whatever. Uh, there will be, without being systemic, trees, native trees, aromatic trees. The ones I was talking about earlier. Some that you know, some that blossom and flower and aromatic in mid-April, beginning of May, middle of May end of May, June, etc., and a selection of things that go up and down the shoreline. So, uh, I mean, the place isn't becoming an arboretum, but it becomes a place of not sort of just like plunk down, uh, uh, you know, pear trees, you know, as you see in the city or whatever. A really sensitive selection of trees that need to be somewhat modest, but we, maybe we can push it depending on what kind of topsoil we can get in here and have like how beautiful it would be to have a Tulia uh, uh, tomentosa, which is a silver linden, which is an immense tree that has a flower that is just like intoxicating. I don't think we can have, we might be able to have some in the parking lot that will just, again, blossom over the edges of the world. But, uh, you know, the handling and the landscaping and the actual path in here is not gonna be an asphalt path where bikes can pick up ski speed and rollerbaders can just zip along. I mean, in this area, if there is a path that's gonna be accessible to roller, it's gonna be kind of between the wall and the edge so that people can be sitting by the wall or at the edge without having stuff like whizzing by them. Chester Blue is a family quarry. The Deer Isle Quarry is owned by the New England Granite. It's another beautiful granite. But I think, to me, either working with Morton Nice Lake Placid Granite or the Chester Blue, uh, they're all economically uh, workable. They're not like exotic kind of marbles from Italy, from, uh, from Italy or uh, Indiana limestone, which is much too porous for this site and is really vulnerable to graffiti. This granite that I'm talking about gets coated with a certain silicon coating, so if it's graffitied, the stuff gets washed off. This is called thermal surface granite. It's actually granite that's saw cut, and then after it's been saw cut, it is flamed with oxyacetylene. And it, 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 what it does is it roughens up the edge. It, it brings the edge down to more of a natural split surface. So it's relatively rough. Uh, you can still see the grain in it, uh, but it's definitely not polished. Polishing is very expensive. Some people may say granite is not in care. I mean, this is a you know water treatment plant. What are we doing facing things in granite? Well, it might come to that. But the point is, is that if with the architects doing precast, the price of precast pre per square foot, uh, we'll just have to measure it out. But the stuff that I can get is definitely less than precast and a lot better looking, a much more durable in a marine situation, and especially more durable to 
to vandalism and uh, especially graffiti because it's not porous. The problem with precast concrete, you spray something wet, the only thing you can do to it is, is, is paint over it with a color that matches it and then never matches it. There he is, he just comes down. He, I mean, he's not out here picking garbage. Cormorants are hugely ex intelligent fish. And when they dive, they don't go for garbage. They go for good, clean fish. They're powerful, powerful birds. There he go. Did he go down? He went down. I mean, basically, we learned everything from nature and from the animals. There he is. Oh, I'm so glad he showed up. He's a good ally. When you get to the end here, you'll see what I mean. There's that big diagonal, which I like. But the point is, is that the DOS and the engineers want to make a point. So we want to take this line and continue it past the diagonal. There's the old cormorant again out there. And uh, past the diagonal. And then from the Newtown Crete side come out. So there's a huge amount of space. It's actually 45 feet extension out uh, to a point. And I think that point is being a huge resource and making it accessible, public is accessible. When people are out there, they always want to be there. So right out over the water, with water on both sides. You have Newtown Creek on your left and Whale Creek on your right. Having access all the way out to there, which is big. It's a lot of, it's a lot of area. And of course, taking advantage that there's nothing out there, I mean, being able to step down to me is, is important. And this diagonal is on many drawings, in fact, on the original profile of Whale Creek, it curved in like this. So I like that element. That the architects kept it in a drawing, the engineers tend to just make straight lines and come out to a point. What we're gonna do is kind of work in the middle and have something that goes out to a point that steps down, that has natural materials, and that hopefully, I mean, this concrete wall here, to me, becomes something that both holds the bank back, but also makes possible the connecting to a clipping over and going out over the water. There will be sheet piling going out to the point, but uh, to what extent, look at that jellyfish down there. See the jellyfish? Jellyfish are extremely sensitive organisms that literally breathe food in with every, every contraction and expansion. So that if jellyfish live in Newtown Creek, on the edge of Newtown Creek and Well Creek, it means the water is clean. I mean, I don't mean clean that you can go take a glass full of it, but the point is when you have a cormorant dipping down and going back and forth for little minnows and you have jellyfish, I mean, not just one that's dead. I mean, these are alive. They're floating. Look, that guy's iridescent. I mean, the irony that, that here you have that chipper plant, my God, it's not working, but you know what it's like when it's working. And that you have waterfowl in the water. Uh, I mean, we saw, we've seen a cormorant. Uh, what have we seen? We saw the cormorant uh, definitely fishing. Uh, then we saw the jellyfish in number, and they weren't dead. They were definitely breathing and, and eating. Uh, and uh, now this Canada goose, a female. Where's the male? It's got to be around here somewhere. Uh, and she seems to be totally happy, no problem. And swallows. We saw swallows when we came in at the other end then. In this space in here is where the granite slabs get stepped down. Structurally now we finally got it solved. Bulkheading with another sheet piling wall back in there with tie backs. And then with fabric and riprap. And then over that I placed the granite. There's a lot of granite. We're talking like two, you know, 120 feet grand kind of staircase stepping down into the water. So when the water comes up, the high tide laps into it. When it goes down, she laps down to the edge. So I have a feeling that this area will be well used. People sitting, talking, picnicking, fishing, kayaking, whatever. The huge advantage is we're facing north, so the sun is always behind us. So we definitely have full use of our eyes without our pupils being contracted. Uh, you know, it's very different sitting on an edge by the water where the water is actually shining on the water, reflecting light into your eyes. It's a very different experience. There's seaweed there. That's, this is seaweed. <laughs> those cormorants and those aquatic animals that go down there, uh, that's healthy stuff. You know, a little bit of polyurethane that's floating on the top or that subway grate or whatever the hell that is over there. Uh, 
doesn't mean that the situation isn't healthy. It's unsightly to look at because it's floating on the surface. Basically, everything else is... We'll clean all this stuff up. And actually clean it up before, uh, before long. <laughs>